my friends, this is Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U. We got another studio update. So just kind of keeping you guys in the know about what I'm doing. I finally got the whole room framed up. Uh, I had to go through and do a whole bunch of framing in the ceiling. I had 16 foot two by tens that I had to lift my ass up there all by myself. So once I got the board up there, I started putting joist hangers. I put a joist hanger for every single one of them. I made sure that I put solid uh, nails into every single spot on the joist hanger. Um, and then on the other side, I took my uh, nail gun and I just toenailed each one of the studs in place. And I made sure that I lined each one of the trusses up in the ceiling uh, up with an actual wall stud. So it uh, balanced the weight out evenly. And then once I got all of the studs in place, I had to go put a rat run up just to keep some rigidity to the entire structure. Once I got the rat run in place, everything was solid and rigid. Then I went to the outside of the wall and I ended up adding a, uh, another two by 10 that goes all the way across and uh, I nailed every single one of the trusses into that. So this thing is solid. Like this whole structure is incredibly solid. Now. When I go to add sheetrock to it, the sheetrock just even adds more rigidity. Got the whole thing framed, uh, framed in for an air conditioning unit. Just something small because uh, like it's hot as hell in here right now. There's no air conditioning in this space. And then adding this was just no airflow whatsoever. So I got something that I can just kind of keep cold air pumped in there at all times. Um, and then I can shut it off so it's not loud when I'm recording. The air conditioner, um, just figuring out how to get it to stay in place because it's meant to be in a window. So all the hardware and everything that it comes with is meant to be like, you know, an extra space for a window to open, to hold up to, you know, like a, um, a, uh, an actual window pane. So this, I'm having to add some bracketing. I'm gonna take some L brackets that I just bought, some metal brackets, and I'm gonna L bracket here and here so it doesn't slide or like move or vibrate at all. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the back. I'm gonna put some more L brackets down here. That way it just holds it in place. I'll probably even add some on the top just to make sure that it doesn't move at all. Got the drywall up, had to do that myself as well. That was really, really difficult. I had to basically just balance sheets up on an eight foot ladder and try to screw them up as I went. So I uh, got all my insulation up. Um, I went through a couple of different staplers. This guy I got real fucking pissed at. So it's broke to shit. <laughs> it just kept jamming. So whatever fucking brand this is, Arrow, I don't know, whatever this style is, don't get this. This thing sucks. It's got this little like adjustment knob. I tried to even adjust everything to get it so it would stop jamming. It worked eventually, but then it just kept fucking jamming. The staples would get screwed up and like get mixed right in there. So finally I just like fucking like, like oh, just started slamming this fucking thing around and getting pissed. I was listening to metal. I was listening to some like Lorna Shore or something. So I just fucking threw it on the ground, broke it to shit. And then I immediately realized that was a terrible decision. Uh, went out and got this thing. This is much better. This thing is dope. Uh, this no jams, not a single jam. This one is like the $35 one, I think. Um, this thing's pretty rad. Fun fact, did you know that when you get really, really, really pissed off and you throw a tool as hard as you can at the concrete, you have to go buy a new tool? I've started to get some of my plugs cut in. I actually got some uh, devices put into specific places. I expanded these a little bit, but I got everything wired. Got all of this wired. I just have to hook into that. So I'm gonna put a 1900 box uh, over the top of that and, and run the MC straight into it. That's what's gonna feed the circuit. Um, got two cans put in because I need some kind of like, like backlighting behind my head, kind of down on me. It helps with the silhouette, I guess. I don't know, I'm studying all these fucking like film <laughs> people on YouTube to make YouTube videos. So you're evidently supposed to have some light behind your head. So that's what that's for. So first I start out uh, from underneath. I cut six inch holes. These actually didn't come with discs. A lot of like recess cans used to come with discs, um, but a lot of these pop-in trims don't actually have like a little paper cutout disc that you can use to trace. So I just measured the can and ended up being six and an eighth. Um, and so I just, I measured out a six and an eighth 
uh, pattern and then traced around that. And then I just used a sheetrock saw and cut the hole out. And this time, rather than going up top, running all my wires and having the, the wires sticking down through the holes like you would normally do in an attic, um, it was just easier. I was already down here. I figured I would just do everything from below first. So uh, if you want to, with these style cans, you can actually just cut the hole. And if you have conductors sticking there, um, you can just shove the little junction box up in the ceiling. It doesn't have to mount to anything, but in this, case these cans actually do have like little hook things that you can mount on the wood so um, i get everything shoved up there i put the cans in place and then i go up top and the reason i saved that to the last and did it kind of in reverse is because i have a bunch of uh, stapling that i needed to do up there so i just wanted to get up top and then do everything and then just be done and come back down and have all of the cans finished <music> All right, so let's do code time. Brought the National Electrical Code Book with me on the job site. <laughs> All right, so being that we are running MC, I thought this was a good time to talk about some stuff with MC. So as you guys can see, I have used staples as my means of securing this uh, cable assembly all the way across. So I've got a staple here and then probably about, what is 16 times three, 32, 40. I've probably got every four feet over there, all the way down, except for down at the end. I just haven't put a staple in that yet. So what I was going to uh, talk about was securing and supporting MC in general. So a whole bunch of people would be like, don't use staples. Why are you using staples? You can't use staples. You gotta use a one hole strap or, or something. Um, you can even use cable ties. So let's break into that. First and foremost, we'll just talk about the methods of uh, securing and supporting. So we are in article 330, metal clad cable type MC. That's what that is. Okay, so we go over to boom, ba -da -ba 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 -ba, securing and supporting. Type MC cable, sorry, 330.30A, if you're listening to this in audio. Type MC cable shall be supported and secured by staples. Boom! <laughs> Cable ties listed and identified for securement. So if you're using cable ties, you can't just use any old like Walmart cable ties. I mean, you can, you're just not following code. Uh, they have to be listed for securement. So that is the, the like delineation for using cable ties. I don't know how many people out there are actually doing that. Uh, so it has to be listed for securement and support straps, hangers, or similar fittings. Whatever the fuck you take that to mean. There's no definition there just or similar things uh, and other approved means designed and installed so as not to damage the cable. So if I was using staples and I was hammering that shit in like crazy and breaking the sheathing and messing all of this up, I would not be doing this to code. But since I'm very delicate with my stapling, <laughs> I just use those staples and it's fine. Now let's talk about the length. I said that I'm roughly four feet for my securing. Is that right? So now if we read a little bit more, we've got two different things in code that talk about securing wire. We have securing and we have supporting. Two different things. This is securing. It is secure. It's not going anywhere. This is supporting. It's supported on a truss. So that's the difference between securing and supporting. So what does it say for MC? If you're going to be going by securing, it says unless otherwise provided cable shall be secured at intervals not exceeding six feet. So yes, we're definitely um, between three 16 inch uh, trusses were within six feet. So it is definitely secured um, probably every four feet. So we're good to go there. Cables containing four or fewer conductors size no larger than 10 AWG shall be secured within 12 inches of every box. So down inside this wall, you can't see there are switches over there uh, that every within 12 inches I'm secured. Down there, you can see maybe there is a strap, boom, right there on the top of that two by 10 that is within 12 inches of that box. And then I have like a coil of it because I'm actually going to be using that here in a minute. Um, I'm gonna put some other cans. So I just left some slack up there, but I was a slacker and didn't realize that I didn't strap the rest of that. So I still need to go back and strap all of that. Sue me. 
Uh, same thing over here. We did 12 inches on the back side of that wrap run. There's a staple right there. So we're, we're within 12 inches there. Um, now that is just for like strapping. That's what they call securing. Uh, so within 12 inches of every box or cabinet fitting, other cable terminations uh, in vertical installations, meaning going down a wall, uh, it's a little bit different. Listed cables with unground conductors, uh, 250 KC mil or larger shall be permitted to be secured at intervals not exceeding 10 feet. So the idea is something is going to sag if you're running it horizontally. So we need to strap more often than if we're going down a wall, it's not really gonna sag. So every 10 feet, you're good to go. Now that is, again, that's securing. Now let's talk about this whole supporting uh, issue and whether or not you can do one or the other or if you have to do both. So supporting, unless otherwise provided, cables shall be supported at intervals not exceeding six feet. So really, do I need to have these staples in if I'm supported every six feet? Do I also need to be secured every six feet? Well, the next paragraph, horizontal runs of type MC cable installed in wooden or metal framing members or similar supporting means shall be considered supported and secured where such support does not exceed six foot intervals. Boom. So in all reality, I don't even need to put these staples on here. It is being supported across these framing members at intervals of 16 inches, not even six feet. So if I was, if it was more than six feet between each one of these trusses, then yeah, I would have to secure to make sure that it's secured within every six feet, but it's not. So we don't really have to do this. I just like to do it because my ass is going to get up here and keep working on stuff. And I don't want to be tripping over this stuff. And I don't want to like, you know, be walking across something and all of a sudden like crush the cable or just like have a loose cable around. So I want to make sure everything's secured in this installation. You don't have to do that clearly says supporting at these specific intervals actually it covers it under supported and secured. So anyways, I just thought that that would be a good kind of like practical application type of thing. Um, but that's your, that's your code time for the day. Now I know that I have three potential kind of lighting zones that I wanted to get run. I don't know that I'm actually going to use three different switch legs for three different sets of lights, but I know that I've got some like colored stuff that I'm going to uh, mess around with some like LED strips. Um, I've got the cans that are overhead and behind me that kind of help outline the silhouette uh, of, you know, the shape of my body through the camera. And then I've got some lights out in front of me that are going to light up my face. So I'm just kind of experimenting with lights. So I ended up running three different switch legs to three different locations. Um, one of them is for the cans that I just installed down below. The other two I just put in junction boxes for the time being because I still don't know what I'm going to do with the lighting until I get the whole space painted and ready to go. So the first thing I do is just start going down and stapling all of the MC. Um, I staple every four feet and uh, get everything set up. I leave a couple little loops at each location just so I've got some extra slack and I can uh, really like move the, the switch legs around wherever I need to, whenever I need to, uh, based on the, the space. The first box that I put in place, I make sure um, that I screw the box in and that I put a ground screw in the back of it. I also make sure that when I install the MC into the box that within 12 inches of the box per code, I put a staple on it. And then I throw a couple more staples on the actual loop uh, of, of MC as well, just because I don't want, you know, that to e get easily pulled around if I'm up here moving around. The next one I'm just putting relatively in the center of the room. Um, again, I, this'll, this, this bundle that I've got coiled up will pretty much reach anywhere in that room. So I have the flexibility to do stuff. Um, so I do the same exact thing. I just screw in the 1900 bracket box. I put a ground screw in it, make sure that I uh, leave about six to eight inches of slack of, of MC inside the box. And then I staple within 12 inches and then staple the loop. The last thing that I do is I peeled up the insulation to find uh, the cans that I just put in. And then I take the junction boxes out and open them up. And to my surprise, there's little itty bitty orange wire nuts on the wires. So this is kind of crazy just because most recess cans have Wagos on the inside of them. And I actually like that. It's 
one time that I do like having Wagos. Um, so being that I'm running number 12 conductors and I have one coming into the first can and then one leaving and going to the second can, I can't use these tiny little wire nuts. So I just take them off, throw them away and uh, install my MC into this box, cut everything really short. I don't wanna leave too much slack in there or else the junction box covers won't close right and I'll just keep popping open. So I get everything landed uh, and then I decide to install the junction boxes to the wood. Again, you don't have to do this. A lot of people just stuff these up in the ceiling when they're working from below. But since I'm up here and I'm up above and I have the time to do it, um, and it just makes it easier for me to know where the terminations are if I need to add anything in the future. So I make sure that I get everything mounted correctly. I staple everything nice and cleanly, go to the second can, hook that one up as well and then put the insulation back in its place. Now that everything is stapled, um, everything looks neat and is done to code, uh, I'm all finished with that. So the, the rest of what I have to do, uh, we'll do in another episode coming up. Um, so I'm gonna start putting sheetrock up right now. I'm gonna get that hooked up, get all my plugs put in. Um, so the next video, hopefully you guys will see like fully taped and floated and having light in here and everything. Um, and then, you know, I gotta still hang my door. So that's what we're gonna get into. Uh, but figured I would just give you guys an update. Let's you know what's going on. Thanks for watching. Um, make sure that you like, uh, subscribe, hit the little notification bell and uh, join the channel because you should join the channel. Because I need your money. <laughs> Love you people, see you soon. Best can't music and video.